Hello everybody, my name is Mihaela Sârbu. I am a professional services engineer at Infinite Wireless. Thank you very much for taking the time to join our webinar today. We are going to discuss about the advanced interference mitigation techniques available for the Infinite Wireless units. The agenda for today includes two items. In the first item, we'll define interferences and we'll check what are the factors causing it. And in the second item, we will introduce step by step the available interference mitigation techniques implemented by Infinite Wireless. Let's check first what are interferences. As we know, the wireless signal is an electromagnetic wave that propagates through the air. On its way, the signal will reflect and diffract on different objects, generating replicas that are most likely out of phase. It will face also meteorological phenomena and, as the air is a shared medium, it will encounter other radio signals that are correlated with its characteristics. The radio signals that are not correlated with the characteristics of the signal will be simply viewed as background noise that also affects the quality of the transmission. Interference is a phenomenon specific to waves and the basic concept behind it is that if multiple waves are present in a location, they will sum up together constructively or destructively, creating a new distorted resulted signal. Therefore, if we generate a good-looking signal, like we see on the transmitter side, after being exposed to the propagation channel, it will reach the receiver as a distorted version. The scope of the interference mitigation techniques is to take measures against the factors causing interferences and to help the receiver recover the useful data from this distorted received signal. Usually, the methods that are implemented at transmission are preventive and the ones implemented at the reception are corrective. Let's briefly review the factors that cause interferences and the signal distortion. First, we have the terrain and physical objects. So, for example, trees and concrete buildings will absorb the signal causing attenuation, while water surfaces, modern buildings and flat terrain will cause multiple reflections resulting in multipath components that will be received altered in both phase and in amplitude. Hills, on the other hand, easily cause diffraction and also absorption. Next, we have the other electromagnetic radiation sources like different technologies that operate in the same frequency range and with similar signal characteristics as, for example, Wi-Fi, LTE or WiMAX. Other devices that generate radio signals are present as well through the shared air medium and we can take as example the radar systems. The last category involves the environmental factors like rain, fog and lightning that will cause absorption and interferences. It is important to note that the higher the frequency, the more significant will be the impact of the rain to the link availability, which is very important for us. Pressure changes and warm dry air over a cooler surface will also influence the wave propagation and this is known as ducting. There are two main evaluation criteria for the level of interferences. The first one is the signal to noise plus interference ratio, which you might also know as channel to noise plus interference ratio. As we can see in the picture, the lowest level is the noise floor, representing the background radiation uncorrelated with the useful signal. Besides this, an in-band interference is present and in order to correctly evaluate the quality of the channel, the signal to interference plus noise ratio should be taken into account and not just the signal to noise ratio. The second criteria for determining the quality of the channel is by evaluating the bit error rate. This tells us the percentage of bits that are altered or erroneously received and it is defined as the ratio between the number of error bits and the total number of bits sent over a specific measurement period. The interference mitigation techniques will usually measure SINR or BER and we'll try to optimize them in order to ensure a high SINR value and a low bear level corresponding to a good transmission channel. So SINR and bear are correlated and express the quality of the transmission. Let's now move forward and review the interference mitigation techniques available for the infinite wireless units. 
We'll begin with the powerful interference mitigation technique, which is DFS or dynamic frequency selection, available for the 5 GHz spectrum that is allocated on a primarily basis to the radio location and radio navigation systems. As wireless access systems deployed in the 5 GHz spectrum are license exempt, it is difficult to control the density of the equipment. Therefore, DFS has the following standard defined scopes. First, to protect the radar systems by avoiding co-channel operation with the broadband wireless systems. To be mentioned here that the radars send powerful narrow pulses that are not correlated with the wireless system signals. And the second is to ensure a uniform distribution of the applications across the spectrum and therefore to reduce the interference level. Infinite Wireless implements two types of DFS, Instant DFS or Hardware DFS, which is performed using an additional radio module that makes continuous measurements and maintains a frequency database with the status of all the channels. Next we have the regular DFS or software DFS with no additional radio module, the measurements being performed only when the unit does not transmit any data and using the same radio module for the data transmission and for the interference measurement. Let's see how DFS works. In case of standard DFS, after power on, the unit performs channel availability check for minimum 60 seconds and then allocates an available channel. The constant in-service monitoring begins and in case that radar is detected or the SINR falls below the threshold, the unit follows the response requirements. It stops its uh, own transmission within one second and all the transmissions on the channel should stop in 10 seconds. The link is interrupted in order to perform channel availability check again, choose the clearest channel and re-establish the link. In case of instant DFS, the initial process is the same, but the difference is that after power on, a constant off-channel CAC takes place and the additional radio module scans the whole defined frequency range. A frequency database is regularly updated, the interference level is registered for each channel and the channels are also marked as available or blocked. In case that radar is detected or the SINR falls below the threshold, the transmission on the used frequency stops within 10 seconds, but no link interruption takes place. Instead, instant switch over is performed to the clearest channel at that time by consulting the frequency database maintained during the off-channel CAC. So it is very important that in this case, in case of instant DFS, we do not interrupt the link, we just switch to the clearest channel. The DFS tool in the web interface helps you to monitor the status of the instant DFS. The detailed current channel status for all the monitored channels is displayed. You can check the available channels, the blocked channels, remaining on hold time, interference level and so on. The available channel will change in real time in order to ensure the best SINR level available and to avoid interferences. The advantages of IDFS are the following. There is no link interruption if radar is detected by using the frequency database maintained during the off-channel CAC. In case of link quality deterioration, the master can decide to switch the channel to a better one without link interruption. And Spectrum Analyzer built-in tool can be run without interrupting the link as well. The disadvantage is that in noisy environments, near loss conditions or in the presence of reflections, there could be false detections of the radar signals. Let's move forward and discuss about TDMA. The TDMA medium access technique provides increased resilience to interferences. Because multipath components arrived at the receiver, they will mix up and lead to inter-symbol interferences making it difficult for the receiver to decide which symbol was actually received. The TDMA frame structure features higher guard intervals, which help to counteract EC as it waits for multipath components to arrive at the receiver and it also helps to determine the beginning and the end of the frame. 
Additionally, Infinite Wireless Units running the TDMA-based software version support synchronization by using the external GPS synchronization hub. This greatly reduces the impact of the interferences coming from the collocated devices. Next, let's introduce the Automatic Transmit Power Control feature. ATPC is a mechanism for controlling the RF transmit power by evaluating the quality of the signal at the receiver side. Usually the quality is evaluated by assessing the bare value. As we can see in the picture, the receiver runs the ATPC algorithm and decides whether the power should be increased or decreased. The command is sent back to the peer end that demodulates the ATPC command and informs the transmitter to adjust the power accordingly. Considering that the power is increased towards the maximum just in case of severe fading, and this happens very rare, we can say that most of the time the TX power is considerably reduced even with up to 15 dB. ATPC has many benefits, out of which we mention that it reduces interferences to adjacent systems, it eliminates some of the problems caused by fading, it improves the frequency reutilization ratio, and it reduces the power consumption. Equalization is the next weapon in fighting against interferences. This is a corrective action implemented at the receiver side and has the scope to restore the shape of the distorted received signal as we can see in the picture. This operation can be performed in the time domain, meaning that the processing is performed to the actual signal, not to its spectrum. This type of equalization is complex to implement, but it is more efficient in counteracting EC and other fading related problems. So you require to implement this method if no other special methods are taken at the receiver. The second type is frequency domain equalization, which is more simple and only equalizes the amplitudes, not the phases also. This means that the processing is performed in the frequency domain, so the signal has to be converted first to frequency domain in order to obtain its spectrum. This type of equalization is used, for example, by infilling XG. Forward error correction is a method for preventing errors or data loss in noisy environments as well. It is also called channel coding and it is based on adding redundancy bits to the data stream by using a coding scheme. This will help the receiver to better estimate the value of the received bits. Auto bitrate is a mechanism that controls the modulation and coding scheme in real time based on the CINR value in order to constantly adapt it to the radio conditions. As we know, lower order modulations are more resilient to noise but offer less capacity while higher order modulations are less resilient to noise and offer increased capacities. We can see in the picture that as the interference level decreases, auto bit rate will choose a higher order modulation and coding scheme. Let's see some examples. QPSK 1 by 2 means that out of every 2 bits, one is used for error correction. This is very good in terms of error correction, but it is ineffective in terms of band utilization. Half of the time we just send redundancy bits instead of useful data. On the other hand, QIM 256 30 by 32 can be used if the radio conditions are good. In this case, there are only two redundancy bits out of every 32 bits and it is enough to correct the errors while it also ensures an efficient bandwidth utilization. Let's move forward and discuss about MIMO and MISO modes. Infinite wireless units transmit and receive in MIMO 2x2 mode. We can state the following advantages. Improved link reliability with increased ability to null the signals present in the same band. Increased capacity by sending parallel data streams. And enhanced near and non-line of sight performance. MISO mode is also available for the infinite wireless units. The significance of MISO in this case is that both antennas, vertical and horizontal, are used to send the same data stream. This will reduce the capacity to half, but if you don't have high capacity requirements, this is a very efficient way to counteract propagation phenomena like multipath fading. 
Since the same data is received by two antennas, it is less probable that both polarization will be subject to the same type of interferences, so the original data can be easily recovered from one of the paths. Next, we'll discuss about antennas and how big is their importance in ensuring a good transmission quality. So the antenna has the scope of converting the electrical current into electromagnetic radiation at transmission and vice versa at reception. The performance of the antenna influences both the transmission and the reception quality. We'll review next the most important aspects related to antennas that should be always considered when evaluating its performance. We begin with the antenna efficiency, which is a fundamental parameter describing the efficiency in converting the transmission power into radiated power. Infinite wireless integrated antennas are made of high quality materials featuring a professional RF design and having an efficient impedance matching with the RF chain, so this positively influences the antenna efficiency. Next, the antenna gain illustrates how much power is radiated in a desired direction compared to an isotropic antenna that radiates the same power equally in all directions as we can see in the picture. Many vendors provide a peak gain value instead of the mean gain measured on the operating frequency range and this impacts the RF transmission quality. Infinite Wireless features an extended range of integrated antennas whose stated values in the datasheet accurately reflect their performance. The radiation pattern offers an easy visualization upon the radiated energy into space. The presence of strong side and back lobes makes the system sensitive to external RF interferences and noise. The unwanted radiation of these secondary lobes also causes problems between the collocated devices, in which case special measures like high frequency separation and distance separation must be implemented. Infinite products use printed circuit boards array integrated antennas with a high precision. For example, the above picture illustrates the radiation pattern of an infinite wireless directional integrated antenna in the left side and the radiation pattern of a low-cost antenna with similar specification in the right side. Next, the front-to-back ratio indicates the ratio between the power gain of the front and rear end of the antenna. Infinite wireless integrated antennas feature high front-to-back ratio, minimum 20 dB, reducing interferences in case of collocated devices. Another important characteristic is the VSVR, which expresses the amount of power that is reflected back to the RF chain instead of being radiated. The minimum VSVR value is 1, which represents the ideal case when no power is reflected back. A high VSVR value, usually greater than 2, will cause significant power loss on certain frequencies and signal distortion that leads to retransmissions and data transfer errors. The VSVR value for the infinite units does not exceed 1.7 and it is evenly distributed over the frequency range, ensuring a proper signal quality. Moving forward, we know that a real antenna will never radiate in a pure polarization mode. The cross-polarization isolation indicates how much lower is the power level of the cross-polarized component compared to the desired polarization component. A bad antenna isolation determines unusable MIMO transmission in medium range, leading to a significant performance degradation. Infinite wireless integrated antennas feature minimum 30 dB cross-polarization isolation. The polarization of the transmitted radio signal will also be influenced by the transmission medium. In its way, the signal will suffer from additional polarization shifts and it will arrive at the receiver with a different orientation. High-performance antennas have the capability to convert the useful signal at the reception, even if the polarization was highly affected by the transmission medium. 
Please note that the discussion was centered on the integrated antenna performances. However, you should keep in mind to check all the above discussed parameters in case that external antennas are used, as the performance of the antenna influences the overall system performance in a very significant way. The built-in spectrum analyzer tool performs a deep analysis of the radio emissions in the area where the unit is placed. The device will scan the radio spectrum on all the available specified frequencies. You can get detailed information about the scanned radio signals on a specific frequency, like for example signal level, frequency, noise floor, RSSI and so on. As we can see, you can perform different settings for the test from the button menu. The result is quite intuitive. The spectrum presents pronounced spikes where interferences are present and by just clicking with the mouse at any frequency, you will obtain all the details about the interference level. Next, automatic repeat request or ARQ is also a method to control the errors in a noisy interfered environment. The mechanism implies sending acknowledgments for each received frame and performing retransmissions in case that an acknowledgement is missing. Retransmissions will take place until acknowledgement is received or until a predefined number of retransmissions is reached. Infinite Wireless uses an efficient block acknowledgement through which a single acknowledgement is sent for a group of frames. This will ensure a minimum data loss and an efficient signaling. Greenfield mode additionally improves the link performance by 10 to 15 percent by reducing the packet overhead to ensure an optimized frame transmission over the air. Please note that greenfield mode can be used only if backward compatibility of a MIMO unit with an old non-MIMO unit is not requested. The last interference mitigation technique that we will discuss about today is OFDM. So OFDM splits the high speed data rate into multiple low rate parallel data streams, which are mapped to different subcarriers as we can see in the picture. This provides increased resilience against selective fading and greatly diminishes the intersymbol interferences. Additionally, OFDM uses a guard interval. We can see an example for the infinite wireless units OFDM implementation. This will help to further overcome the effects of inter-symbol interferences that are caused by the multipath propagation. That completes our agenda for today. Thank you once again for your time and see you again during our next webinar.